Hey Write On Club members, Youth Librarian Eileen here for another week of Write On, Portland District Library's Creative Writing Club. So we are now on to week three of our spring session, which we're all, we're focusing all on poetry this session. And last week, if you remember, I shared a poem that was actually a picture book that they turned into a picture book that was all about the COVID-19 pandemic. I also shared with you one of my personal poems that I wrote when I was in high school or middle school, I can't really remember, um, about a crush that I had. So I hope you enjoyed listening to that. And then we talked about collage poetry and that was our activity for the week. So this week I'm gonna share with you my collage poem, which I'm very excited to share. It came together pretty well and I'm super excited about that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna read that in just a few minutes and then um, we're gonna go over what we're gonna work on this week, which is is blackout poetry. So we're going to use some of those old book pages in your folders um, to make some blackout poems. And you'll also need your colored pencils and some other materials from your take and make bag. So I'm going to go over in just a few minutes what we're going to do for our activity and what supplies you'll need. Um, and we're also, as usual, we're going to do our warm-up activity this week, but we're going to go up by a whole minute. So instead of two minutes, we're going to do three minutes. Um, so all sorts of fun things planned, and I hope to share lots of examples with you this week on the blackout poetry. So let's just jump right in and talk about what supplies you'll need for the week. So our main activity this week is going to be blackout poetry. So for the blackout poetry part of today, you're going to need your stack of book pages that are in your folder, and then you'll also need your Sharpie markers. And then um, you have two Sharpie markers, so you have this one, which is a little bit of a thicker marker, and then you have the fine point Sharpie marker. And you'll also need your pencil, and for this one, I highly recommend you start with a pencil. Even I, the pen lover, am going to do the first part with a pencil. Um, because with pencil, you can erase and change your mind. If you use pen, there's no going back. And unfortunately, because all of the book pages are unique, you're not gonna get two of the same. There's no going back and redoing anything with this, this uh, Blackout Poetry project. And then, you're also gonna need your colored pencils. So make sure you've got your markers, your book pages, your colored pencils, your pencil, and then you'll also need your trusty uh, composition notebook, which is the black and white one in your take and make bag. That's where we're gonna do our warm up activity, our free writing activity this week. So go ahead and get all your supplies out, and we are gonna do our free writing warm up here in just a minute. So go ahead and get your supplies out, and I'll be back in just a minute to get started with our free writing. All right, club members, we are gonna do our warm-up activity to get those juices flowing in our brains and to really get started on our creative writing for the week. Um, we always like to just warm up uh, to get started for the day. So I've got my composition notebook and you should pick one of your lovely writing utensils from your take and make bag. And again, we're gonna go up to three whole minutes of free writing this week. Um, we, we went up from two minutes the, the previous two weeks. Um, and again, free writing is just writing whatever is on your mind at the time. You're not judging your thoughts, you're not proofreading, you're not focusing on grammar or punctuation, you're just writing, writing, writing whatever is on your brain at the time. Whether that be about the club, about what you're doing for the day, about what has already happened to you in your day, um, about a specific person. So there's all sorts of things that you could be thinking about and we just wanna get that onto some paper. So. Go ahead, and as usual, I'm gonna play my music to be your timer. So we're gonna start with the music here in just a second for three whole minutes of free writing. And when that three minutes is up, I will be back to check in on you, and we'll get started with some blackout poetry for the week.
All right, that three minutes is up now. How do you feel after that? Is it getting easier? Are you still struggling? Um, again, it's just a warm-up activity, so hopefully it's getting a little bit easier for you. Um, I know for myself, I have trouble just writing what's ever on my mind. Again, I'm such a perfectionist sometimes that I just want to sit there and I want to proofread and I want to fix my grammar and my punctuation, um, but that is not what free writing is about. So I hope you enjoyed getting some things off of your chest and onto your paper. And I hope you also feel a little bit more warmed up to work on our poetry because that is what the free writing activity is supposed to be doing here for us. So I know I said we would jump right into blackout poetry when we were done with our warm up activity, but I forgot that I wanted to share my collage poem with you all. And again, I'm very excited with the way that mine turned out. I may even be making another one um, before we do the collaging again. So just a reminder, we are gonna be doing collaging again in the next couple weeks. Um, so hopefully you still have some of your magazine pages, and if not, we can always provide you more when we do it again. Um, but I uh, did a lot of my cutting of my words on camera last week, and then I had this whole pile to go through and sort through, and so I finally figured a good combination out. Um, and so my poem is called The Times. And this is what it ended up looking like, um, which again, I'm very pleased with not only what mine looks like, but the content. Um, I love that I have a little color scheme. Um, so all in all, I'm super happy and proud of my poem. So um, I am gonna just tell you a little bit about my poem because it's kind of a nerdy librarian thing. Um, but I focus my poem on um, making sure that when you're reading the news or looking for information that you're finding factual, accurate, true information. Nowadays there is so much information available to us in the world and on the internet. I mean, you can pretty much Google anything now. Um, and so it's just really important that when we do come across information that we're looking for, is this from a reliable source? Is it true? Um, is what I'm reading actually accurate? Um, so there's a lot of things that we have to go through, a process that we have to go through to figure out, is this real information that I'm reading? So that's what my poem is about, is about the process that we go through when we're reading stuff to make sure that that information is accurate. And maybe when you get a little bit older, if you're in middle, when you're in middle school and high school, they really teach you a lot about that because you're gonna be doing more research papers and things like that. Um, so just wait if you haven't already learned more about doing research, you will learn more in school here in the next few years. Okay, so now I'm gonna read my poem to you all. And again, it's called The Times. Pay attention to the signs the spotlight that reveal information, constantly transmitting hidden stuff, dig, find current facts. And then, um, so what I did here is at the bottom, I signed my name and I put the date and then up here with the title, I just used my marker and put a little box around it just to make it stand out but a little bit more. Um, but this is again, so here's just a little bit of a close up for you. Um, here I even used um, this word two. I used it for the start of two different lines because it was so much bigger. So when I said um, to the signs and to the spotlight, they're using the same two here. Um, and again, if, if you can see here, it just happened to be that my poem has a color scheme. So there's a lot of orange and black and yellow. And then if you notice right here, this word dig is in green. And that one is kind of standing out by itself for a reason, um, just because you do have to dig. Sometimes, again, people just think that when you Google something, the first search result that you come up is what you were looking for and exactly factual and accurate, um, but that's not always the case. So sometimes we just have to dig a little bit deeper and a little bit harder to find exactly what we're looking for and making sure that it's true information. So I had a lot of fun doing the collage poetry and I hope you enjoyed doing it as well. If you have any final uh, collage poems that you would like to share with me, I would love for you to send those to me via email. Um, you could take a picture of them. So just a lot of fun things that you could share with me over the next week or so. All right, so now we are gonna get into the actual blackout poetry activity for the week. 
And I'm gonna share with you some examples so you not only see um, the poems, but you can also get an idea of what you might wanna do. And I will read a couple here on camera and then I'll have them up on the screen for you so that you can see. And then I'll show you some other more colorful examples because the three that I'm gonna be reading on camera are only black and white. Um, so they didn't end up using any colored pencils, but I realized that I also just wanna show you some colorful examples because then you know kind of all the possibilities that are open to you with the blackout poetry. So first I wanna go over what blackout poetry is, how we do it, then I'll read the examples and uh, share a few last minute tips and then I'll set you free to make your own. Alrighty, so blackout poetry, if you don't already know what it is, is a more popular form of poetry just in the last few years. And basically what it is, is you take a book page from an old book, so we took some from our recycled pile and cut them up for you and gave you book pages. And there's a couple of different books that we've given you pages from, just so you'd have some choice and variety. And so what you do is you take a book page and you're gonna scan the page looking for words that you could turn into a poem. And then you take your pencil and you start circling those words that catch your attention. And after you circle some of your words, you'll notice that some of them might be referred to as an anchor word or a more important word. Um, and that will kind of help you formulate or create your poem around it. So it gives you kind of a theme or maybe a title. Um, so for instance, I'm just gonna refer back to my collage poem just as an example. So when I was doing my collage poem, I really was struggling on like what what is the topic? What am I actually collaging about? What is this poem gonna be about? And then I saw this word information. And that was kind of my anchor word for the entire poem. So you're gonna do that, but with your book page. So you're gonna find a bunch of words that you like and then see if one maybe or two sticks out and you start to see kind of a theme. And then you can pick more words based on that. And after a few minutes of doing that, you'll have enough circled words to create your entire poem and it'll flow very nicely. And with blackout poetry, they tend to be a lot shorter than a typical poem. So it might only be, you know, just a few words. You'll see the examples that I'm gonna share with you here in a minute are anywhere from five to maybe 15 words. And then um, basically the point of the blackout poetry is that once you've circled those words that you wanna use as your poem, you black out every other word on the page. So only the words that you've selected for your final poem are left showing. And a lot of people have taken um, to this to a whole other creative level by doing artwork on there as well. So if you are one of those people who loves to draw and sketch and color and create new and wonderful drawings, then you can take your blackout poem to a whole other level by drawing pictures and adding color with your colored pencils. Um, so again, there's a lot of things that you can do and a lot of options that you have. And again, just a reminder that we're, we start with our pencil and we circle those words because if we draw in pen or we start right with our blackout markers then there's no going back if you make a mistake or if you black out a word that you didn't mean to you will not have an identical book page and you'll just have to kind of start over or modify your original plan which isn't the worst but I'm just warning you that this is what could happen and that is coming from somebody who did blackout poetry when I was in school and the same thing happened is I got a little too excited and I just went at it with my sharpie marker and the next thing I knew I was was blacking out words that I meant to have in my poem and I couldn't fix it and it's just heartbreaking when that happens so I'm just warning you if you're one of those people who doesn't want to make any mistakes start with your pencil all right so let's see here um, the next thing I want you to look at are some of the example poems and again this is just a visual thing to get you thinking about what you might want to do um, and then after I read a couple of these on camera here, I will show you some other colorful examples that I also found online. And these are all things I found online, so um, I did not make any of these. So here's the first one that I'm gonna show you. And this one says, um, let's see, it says, home we find in the grain of the heart. And as you will notice, um, the bottom here where the word heart is actually listed on the poem is a heart, they've drawn a heart, and they use some really cool different texture or designs um, to not just color it all black, but they've added some stripes and stuff to give it some dimension. And then the top part here, um, they have shown as a tree. 
So they've drawn a tree into the heart and the roots are all kind of in there. Um, and again, the poem is as simple as just a few words, but it's still wonderful and powerful. And that's the, that's the thing about poetry is it doesn't matter how long it is, it still has an impact on us. So I'm gonna read this one one more time as you look at the imagery of it uh, on the screen here. Um, you can kind of listen to the words and see how the images relate to those. So it says, home we find in the grain of the heart. So again, super simple, but super cute. And it just, it hit me when I saw this one, especially with the picture, the imagery and the words together, very powerful. So here is the second example that I'm gonna share with you. And again, this one has some powerful imagery to go with the words and the imagery are just the pictures. So this one, if you can take a guess, is waves. So this one, the actual poem is, miraculous waves of wonder climbed around her and the desire to start over again was official. Again, super simple, but still impactful. And I love the way that they gave the poem some texture and some dimension by blacking out the entire top half and then creating those waves with some lines at the bottom. So pretty cool. All right, and this last one is probably one of my favorites of the three that I'm sharing here with you. But again, they're all unique and they're all so different that it's really hard to compare. Um, I just really love feathers for some, some odd reason. So I just really enjoy this next one. So here is the next one, and this one says, I found a promise of something better. And then they just have that simple, well not simple because it's actually quite impressive the way that they've drawn it, and I don't think I could draw that, um, but they've got this lovely feather next to it. So you kind of wonder like where, you know, what was that person thinking? Does the feather have some kind of meaning to them? Um, you know, we'll never know because we, again, I, we took these off the internet so we can't ask the author, um, but just a lot of good things to think about as we're doing our own. Uh, and then here are just a few color examples for you, just to show you how you can take something from the black and white stage using your colored pencils and integrating some of that color into it to make it a little bit more bright and colorful and fun. Um, not that the black and white ones aren't fun. They're all fun. Everything we're doing is fun, but again, there's so many options and everybody here is so creative and has their own ideas that I'm just excited to see what you can create with all the possibilities that I'm sharing with you here today. So here's our first color poem. And again, we're just looking at these. I'm not gonna read these. These are just a, a few examples of some color that you can add to your blackout poem. So here's a second color one and then one other final example for you. All right, so those are all of the examples that I wanted to share with you. Uh, next, I'm going to show you on camera just how to kind of work through the beginning stages and just show you some techniques with the markers and things and then you can get started on your own for the week. Okay, so what I have in front of me is one of my blank book pages. I have my pencil, my two markers, and then all of my colored pencils. So I've got all my supplies that I'll need to create my one, my first blackout poem. And what I had told you to start with is to take your pencil and to start circling some of those words that stand out to you. And the thing is, is you're gonna wanna skim, which just means looking over the page, looking, glancing, seeing if there's some exciting words that you wanna maybe circle. And if you're like, oh, this page doesn't have any words that I like, then here's the nice thing. You can either decide to turn it over and there's a whole nother page, or you can go back to your starter pile and just grab a whole different book page or just a different page out of that one book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of scan the page here and I like this word everything and let's see. So you're, again, you're just going to kind of go through and you're going to eyeball and see if there's any kind of exciting words that stick out to you. And that way you can kind of get an idea of maybe what you want to write your poem about.
Okay, so here I've circled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven words. And so far my, my circled words are everything together, a single day, draped, hung from, beneath, same time, I always warned him. So I don't really know where exactly I wanted to take the poem yet, but those were kind of the words that stuck out to me. So the next step, once I've kind of decided, and again, this is just a practice example one that I'm showing you, but once I've actually decided about all the words that I want to use for my poem, um, and how I do that, so I've gone through the first time and circled my words, and now I'm gonna, like I did just now, I've read the words in order, and I'm gonna see, do I need to add more words? Does that make sense? Is my poem complete? Right now it's kind of incomplete, so I would definitely want to go through and find some more other words to kind of solidify my poem. Um, but for example purposes, I'm just gonna go from here and show you to do how to do the blackout steps. So once you have circled every word that you want to use for your poem, make sure they're circled in pencil and erase every other word that you don't want to use because you don't want to confuse yourself. So erase all the words that you are planning on blacking out and have all of the words that you're gonna keep as is circled in pencil and we can go back and erase later and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna decide do I want to create a picture or do I just plan on blacking out my entire page if you're gonna do a picture take a little bit more time to kind of plan it out maybe sketch it with your pencil but if you're just gonna plan on doing everything black then you can do what I'm gonna do here next um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thick marker and I'm going to put a box or a circle depending on what shape because you can kind of do any shape. And again, this is kind of art and poetry together. Um, so I'm just going to do a simple box around my words that I'm going to keep for my poem. Okay, so there you have it. So I've circled all the words that I'm gonna keep for my poem. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and just erase my pencil marks, just so my page is nice and cleaned up. Granted, we're gonna be blacking everything out, so just remember that as well. So now that I've erased all of my pencil marks, now the blackout fun begins. And I'm going to take my thick marker here, and again, because I've already circled my words I'm gonna keep for my poem, I'm gonna black out every other word on this page, including the author name at the top and the page number at the bottom. And I'm just doing this pretty quickly so you'll see spots in between mine. Uh, maybe you like it looking a little bit more rough, maybe that fits kind of the theme of your poem. Um, so just again remember that this is art as well and there's about a million and one different options that you could take here on how to do this. This is just one example. Um, and again this part here is why we call this blackout poetry. So it got its name right here from we're blacking out all of the words on the page that we don't want to use in our actual poem that we're writing here today. Okay, so there we have it. My poem is blacked out and you will see now that only the words I wanted to include in my poem are still visible and readable on the page. So now it just says, everything together, a single day, draped, hung from, same time I always warned him. So not really a, a legible poem, but again, this is just an example to show you. And again, you can draw a picture, you can color it in, you could use your really thin marker to add some intricate designs. Um, so all sorts of fun that you can have this week. And what I'm gonna ask you to do is to, you can use up some of your book pages, but try to say, save at least half of them because we are gonna do blackout poetry again later this month or this session. 
So not the only week that we're gonna do blackout poetry. This is just to kind of get you started. And again, if you have examples that you wanna send me when you're done, I would love to see some of your work this week. Um, and as always, I just love to see what you guys are working on, even if you don't wanna share it with the rest of the club, that's fine. I know po poetry can be very personal and we don't always wanna share it with others, but I would love to at least see some of your poetry. And I did finally hear from a club member this week, so I was very excited to get your email. Thank Thank you so much and I just love hearing from you guys so if you have any questions or need any help this week please let me know um, I know I've given you a lot of options here this week so I, I just hope you have some fun all right, right on club members. That is the end of week three for us today. And I hope you have all sorts of fun creating your own blackout poems. If you have some really fun poems that you want to send to me, I would love to see them and read those. And I also want to just let you know that I found out that the New York Times, which is a newspaper based out of New York City, has a website that if you don't have access to book pages, they will let you take some of their old articles and do their your own blackout poetry online so again if you run out of new uh, out of book pages and you want to do something digital that's also fun but in poetry and related to what we're doing you can go ahead and visit the website that I'm gonna share here on screen and also in the in the description down below on our video so check it out if you're interested it's another little added activity that you could do um, to inspire yourself and to do some less permanent blackout poetry um, and again, that's going to be using the New York Times articles that they have on their website. So just another fun option for you to explore poetry this week. And I really look forward to receiving some of your blackout poems and reading some of those. And as always, I will share my own finished co copies with you all next week. I hope you have so much fun this week creating your blackout poetry. And just a reminder that if you have any questions, comments, or need help from me for any reason, please just shoot me an email or give me a call here at the library. I will see you all next week for more on poetry.